Woke culture has blanketed the world. Companies are getting behind it as corporate policy. Schools are parading it in front of children. Governments are standing behind it and even protecting it and kind of enforcing it through law. But is it something actually being embraced by the every, everyday person or is it just an agenda being manipulated to appear that it's more popular than it actually is? Well, going by the boycotts now sweeping the country, it appears it's the latter. Public awareness is now going beyond the surface narratives, and people are starting to see the real motives behind the woke push. This is where CEI comes into play. That's the Corporate Equality Index. And there were similar scores like ESG, or Environmental and Social Governance, and DEI, that's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. When I spoke with James Lindsay of New Discourses last week, he noted something important. The corporate scoring system, it functions on mafia tactics. Watch. What we have is that, that the boycott has revealed, forced the revelation of how this extortion racket works and how serious the uh, uh, extortion racket is. Get that extortion racket. In other words, the mass social push with race politics, environmental policy, and the homosexual agenda is not organic. It's happening because the public really is just being forced to adopt it. It's not happening because they want it. It's happening because investors are using a financial monopoly to force their values on society. The public is only now becoming aware of this, but this has been going on really secretly behind the scenes in the business community for some time. Take BlackRock, for example. The company is one of the largest investment firms in the world. It uses its control of money to force companies behind the scenes to bend to its will. Here's the company's CEO, Larry Fink, on a panel with CEO of American Express back in 2017 talking about this. You have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock we are forcing behaviors. 54% uh, of the incoming class are women. We, we added four more points in terms of diverse uh, employment this year. What we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted. You have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race, or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. You get that? They have to force behaviors. Why would force be necessary if it's something the public wants? Remember that capitalism works on the natural demands of the market. It's when people want something, the product typically sells. When people don't want something, the product does not sell and the market fails. Consumer demand is what decides what companies provide. And companies typically change what they provide based on what the consumer wants. So what do we call it when the companies are not providing goods based on the demands of the consumer, based on the market? What do we call it when the companies are instead being forced, and that word forced, to comply with pressure from the top in order to change a, you know, force a cultural change on the consumers. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not capitalism. That's actually what used to be called interventionalism. It's the driving market idea, ironically, behind socialist business policies that were seen under the Soviets, the Nazis, and the fascists of Mussolini. Econom economist Ludwig von Mises actually explained this in his book, Planned Chaos, and he said this. He said, there are many supporters of interventionalism who consider it the most appropriate method of realizing, step by step, full socialism. There are also many interventionists who are not outright socialists. They aim at the establishment of a mixed economy as a permanent system of economic management. They endeavor to restrain, to regulate, and to improve capitalism by government interference with business and by labor unionism. Sound familiar? Now, Mises noted there are two ways of creating this type of socialism under the guise of what is really just phony capitalism. It's not real capitalism. First is what was seen under the Soviets in Russia. It's the more direct Marxist approach, interestingly, with a government system of total bureaucracy, of absolute 
state control. He described this as being where all economic enterprises are departments of the government, just as the administration of the army and the navy or the postal system. Every single plant, shop, or farm stands in the same relation to the superior central organization as does a post office to the office of the postmaster general. The whole nation forms one single labor army with compulsory service. The commander of this army is the chief of the state. Interestingly, though, the second type, one less talked about, is what was seen under Adolf Hitler's Nazis, the actual Nazis. It was the system of so-called shop managers, what they called them. It was where apparent entrepreneurs did the buying and selling, paid the workers, and handled the contracts and finances, but they were not truly independent. As Mises explained, in the Nazi system, the government tells these seeming entrepreneurs what and how to produce, at what prices and from whom to buy, at what prices and to whom to sell. The government decrees at what wages laborers should work and to whom and under what terms the capitalists should entrust their funds. Market exchange is but a sham. And Mises notes that in the true business policies of Nazi socialism, quote, the authority, not the consumer, directs production. The central board of production management is supreme. All citizens are nothing else but civil servants. This is socialism with the outward appearance of capitalism. Some labels of capitalistic market economy are retained, but they signify here something entirely different from what they mean in the market economy. Now look, taking things as they currently stand with ESG, DEI, and CEI politics right now happening as we speak, we can see that the woke culture for businesses is not being driven by consumers. Instead, the authority directs production, the authority in these policies behind the scenes. The central board at major investment firms backed by government regulations on ESG and DEI, they now reign supreme. And the citizen in the market of, in the market of forced social policy, the one we're watching right now, are nothing but civil servants being forced to go along with it. In other words, folks, the economic forces behind the woke movement are using Nazi policies in the truest sense. They are practicing Nazism, actual Nazism, while ironically claiming to represent the opposite. The boycotts, though, seem to be unraveling this, which is interesting to watch. As Victor Davis Hansen noted, it appears the sleeping dragon of conservatism, of conservatism is finally waking up. A documentary from Matt Walsh at Daily Wire is a, good, is a good example of this. It's What is a Woman? It exposes the transsexual movement and its harm to children. The establishment forces in business and media, they've been deeply criticizing this. Pressure from above, right? It was aired in full on Twitter last week after initially being canceled from that pressure from above. After airing, however, it currently stands at 174 million views. The attempts to cancel it were from the corporate level. The employees at Twitter who are accused of trying to ban the documentary, they've allegedly been fired. In other words, the market has spoken. The actual views of the people who are directing the market do not support the agendas they're being forced with, and we're seeing the effects of it. And consumers who drive the market are now stirring. They're realizing the power they wield. As of last week, Anheuser-Busch had lost $27 billion from its stock value, and counting. This is amid boycotts after Bud Light associated itself with trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Meanwhile, Target, another big one in the scene, they've lost an estimated $12 billion in market value and counting. Amid boycotts for its homosexual and Satanist affiliated clothing lines. We're also now seeing a ripple effect with this. Companies that usually push the homosexual agenda in Pride Month in June, they appear to be backing down. Some are allegedly removing the homosexual-themed rainbow colors from their logos. Others don't appear to be making the logo changes at all this time around. The market, in other words, is speaking, and the forces that are trying to manipulate the market for social and political agendas, they are on the retreat. 
Stay tuned after the break. We'll be speaking with Epic Times reporter Kevin Stockland about the ESG system and what's behind this agenda.